talk about the standards for mathematical practice on the board, and I asked Ms. Ditto if she'd leave you in a little bit of a conversation about how do we use some of the standards for mathematical practice and what we just did. So thank you. And thank you all very much. This was really fun. It was really fun. So yeah, we have been doing this throughout the year. We've been thinking about the standards for mathematical practice and trying to kind of figure out together what they look like in our class. So what do you, what do you guys think? What are some of the practices that we just engaged in throughout this whole lesson today? Which was so much fun, by the way. Nina, what's one of the practices? Model with mathematics. OK, so can you tell me what we did that we were, we were modeling with mathematics? We were um, doing probability <coughs> as a game to help us figure out the
a lot of times you, I really mean this. My sixth graders used to look at me like I was crazy when I would say this to them. A lot of times you learn more by getting the wrong answer and figuring out why it's wrong than just kind of getting lucky and getting the right answer. Mm -hmm. That's true about a lot of things in life because you're going to stop and think about, wait a minute, why didn't that work? And when you automatically just get the right answer, sometimes you don't stop and do that kind of thinking. And you are willing to share your thinking. Don't ever be not willing to share your thinking because you're afraid your answer is wrong. Because I think sometimes that's where critiquing the reasoning of others that you can really have a conversation and understand better what's going on. So, so many kids that I used to have used to think, well, if I get the right answer, I'm done. I don't have to think anymore. And that's not what doing mathematics is about. In fact, in five years, you might even remember this game. But you, what you've learned about probability will come up again in five years, and some of the things that you thought about today will be buried in your head. So that's great. Well, thank you so much. I'm so, well, I'm so you. glad you noticed the things about them that I keep telling them are true. Um, it's really nice to hear it coming from another person. Thank you. This was so much fun. So can it's I tell really them where we're going now? Yes. We're going back downtown. We have about 5,000 math teachers coming into town. Uh, Mr. Anderson, Dr. Anderson, was in charge of putting, they're going to be here for two, three days. Friday afternoon, the conference is over, two and a half days. We've got how many sessions? 200 and some. we got about 200 different things going on, because teachers keep learning all the time, too. So we have 5,000 5, math teachers from all over the country coming in. They're going to attend me. That's scary, isn't it? <laughs> scary thought. And Ms. Zimmerman has gotten, because it doesn't just happen. We have to have volunteers, and we have a wonderful program. So just think about all these math teachers that have come to Chicago to learn more about teaching math. That's where we're going for the next two days, and we're going to have fun. They have a big exhibit hall with all this math stuff in. You know all the neat stuff you guys use, like the, the tools that you use? There's calculators, there's chips, there's books for math teachers. And I call it Toys R Us for math teachers. <laughs> because math teachers really have fun walking through that exhibit hall and trying out all this stuff that then they buy and they bring back and share with their students. So there's big happenings going on there. Thank you all very, very much. Well, thank you so much. We know you have so many things to think about with this conference. So really, thank you so much. It was an honor. This is my pleasure.